flower friends, it's Nicole from Flower Hill Farm. We have an absolute chaotic day planned and I'm so excited. We have a bunch of people coming to help out today. We are gonna start planting baskets. We had a rough, scary night overnight. We almost, well, we lost power for a little bit. We almost got a little bit too cold in the greenhouse, but Brad and I were ready with propane heaters, kerosene heaters, ger generators, all the things. Uh, we, we quickly learned that our long-term plan is to have an automatic generator here that will turn on as soon as we lose power, which my father is actually a Generac uh, dealer. He sells them, he installs them, he maintains them. So I'm all set. My dad's got me on the list. I will be having a generator installed. Not sure if it's gonna be this year. They're quite pricey, but at least I'm on the list and it's uh, an expense that I know I'm gonna have to come up with because I did not sleep last night checking the temperatures in the greenhouse. I know a lot of you guys experienced this too. So yesterday, the day that my plants arrived, it was beautiful out. I mean, it wasn't beautiful. It was rainy, overcast, but it was 58 degrees, which is unseasonably warm for this area, upstate New York. Anyway, it was one of those days where the temperature had a huge swing. It went from 60 degrees to 14 degrees over the course of just a couple of hours. And we were still here as the temperature change started. And then hail out of nowhere. <laughs> It was crazy that it was so loud inside the greenhouse and we were there sorting the plugs, getting things in the correct piles of what needed to be planted together, et cetera, et cetera, which is really kind of fun and I love doing it. But thankfully the power did not go out again after about eight, seven o'clock last night. I think seven o'clock because we had just left here earlier. It was so bad out. The roads were awful. I was hydroplaning all over the place. Thankfully we didn't get snow, we got a dusting. My neighbors 45 minutes down the road, they have uh, 15 to 17 inches of snow this morning. We didn't get any of that. Uh, so it was a close call for us weather-wise. But anyway, I have a ton of people coming here this morning and we're gonna get going on planting. Um, but I wanted to just give you guys a quick update because I had posted on my other socials that we were getting really nervous with the weather. But my plants are here, everything has arrived. I have my soil blocker and stuff. I actually just got it out of the car. And uh, my friend Jules is coming over and she's gonna be starting these seeds this morning while I get around and around and do a bunch of other things. Um, so she's gonna be here shortly and I'll introduce you to Jules. And Jules is one of my sister's best friends. They used to work together. And so she just became part of our family and she loves to help out when she can. So Jules is coming to hang out for a couple of hours this morning and get her hands in the dirt. And I'm so excited for you guys to meet her. I am actually going to be moving some stuff around in the front here while she's here. I brought my crock pot today. <laughs> and I have a meal because we are gonna be planting baskets today. Um, okay, so I wanted to show you guys that Ethan was here all day yesterday and he got a lot, hundreds more baskets ready to go in number three. So I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna make sure the heat is turned on and we're gonna be ready to plant the baskets. Okay, here we go. We got bicycles in here. We got, look at all this. The pots are fantastic. They are filled, they are ready to go. Look. I think we have like 350 of them now. Look how good. I'm so excited. So all the 12 inch baskets this year are gonna be green. I thought it would be easier for whoever is running my cash register to know the price points. My green baskets are 12 inches and then my white baskets are 10 inch baskets. So they will be priced accordingly. Uh, basically the 12 inch ones are the combination with all the fancy flowers, lots of different ones. And the 10 inch baskets I'm gonna have are basically like all a certain color Calabricoa or all a certain color Petunia. So they're not combination baskets. They're just, you know, beautiful still, but a different price point, fewer plants and not as much variety. I also have um, other things to fill today like the lavender, the rosemary, so I have to fill some of the herb pots. And then I have all of those succulents that need to be um, planted as well. Those are, are also going in the three and, a, three and a half inch deep pot. So we'll have a variety of things being planted over the next few days, and I will show you guys as much as possible. The other thing that's gonna be a little bit different, the rubecchia, the echinacea. Last year I did some rubecchia in, um, and some ec in four inch pots. I'm gonna bump them up this year. I'm gonna do them in the five and a half inch pots, the big square pots, which means they'll be bigger plants, a little bit higher of a price point, 
but it'll be a healthier, bigger perennial plant ready to go in the ground. <sighs> it smells like dirt in here. I see that sun. It is shining in here, so it is going to warm up in here quickly, and I doubt the heat will turn on very much at all. Okay, while well, I'm waiting for Jules to get here, I've mixed up, this is my Vermont compost that I brought in. Some of it's partially frozen because it was in my car overnight. So I just put it in this tray, added some warm water, and now I have my soil blocker, and I'm gonna make some trays up for Jules. And then I'll actually teach her how to make soil blocks when she gets here so that she can make some too. Okay, Jules is here and she's mm -hmm. starting to peppers. Yay! Peppers, peppers <laughs> now you got Peter Pepper. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> and, you, I can't stop. and the Those Lupini, I know. And then the uh, ghost pepper. What's the red one again? Carolina Reaper. Ah, oh, Carolina Reaper. Okay, cool. And now we're gonna go fill some more pots so that Jules can do lavender and rosemary, the good smelly stuff. Okay, we're in the third greenhouse and we are gonna be planting the very first plugs of the season. Okay, so I have lavender and I have all of the tags here. I'm just sticking them in. You can stick them in before, stick them in after. People have different preferences. I'm just doing it before. I'm just getting started with the first tray and then I think Jules is gonna come in and finish out the rest of the trays, but I wanted to actually plant the first plugs of the year. Here is a beautiful tray of a lavender. It's beautiful. I planted lavender plugs this size at the farm a couple years ago, and the plants are now like this big. And this is a Munstead, which is one that is perennial for my area. So it's important that you make sure that you're planting and growing things and selling things, in my case, that are good for your area. I'm about to plant the very first basket of the year. This is a combination from Jolly Farmer. It's called Touch of Lavender, and it is fabulous. It has three different plants in it. We have this Purple Prince Alternarithra. I don't like pronouncing that word, but it's called Purple Prince, so that's what I'm gonna call it from now on. And then it has a beautiful lavender sun patient. Really beautiful. This color with the dark purple is stunning. And then, to top it all off, you get a little bit of a variegation coming in with the Lamium. This is gorgeous. I didn't realize this went with a basket when I unboxed it the other day in the video. But it does, and it's marvelous. Touch of Lavender. Now, Jolly Farmer sends with their tags basically the instructions on the back of the tags as to where each one of these plants needs to go in the pot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep one of these for reference, and then I'm going to put the tags in the rest of the pots, and then I'm gonna go ahead and put each one of the plants in their designated area. Last year, I feel like I planted the plants too far away from the center of the basket. So in my mind last year, I was thinking, oh, the sooner, the, the closer it is to the edge of the basket, the sooner it will start to dangle over. And then when the, when the baskets got bigger, they kind of seemed to have a bald spot on top. So to prevent that from happening again this year, I'm planting the plants closer to the middle of the basket, not all the way to the middle, but I'm gonna kind of go halfway from what I did last year. That way there won't be a bald spot on the top of the basket and that it'll all be filled in nicely. Do you need to do rosemary? Um, is, more the is that more lavender? There is more lavender. Okay, he's, more... he's filling more pots oh, right now. Perfect. Awesome. Okay, so we, hey, you wanna grab the rosemary too? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I'm trying, also there's so many things you have to take into consideration. I'm trying not to put the tags where the hangers go. The hangers, there's four designated spots on a 12 inch basket. So I'm just putting it close to the edge, away from the hanger. I have 50 of these Touch of Lavender combo pots 
to do. I'm only going to be able to reach about three baskets deep on this side and then I'll hop over to the other side of the table to do the three baskets on the other side. This is actually perfect. We've never done it this way. Um, obviously this is only my second season here at the nursery. Um, so we're trying to figure things out. But the reason that I'm only turning on the heat in greenhouse number three is because I can fit a lot of baskets in here. And instead of spreading things out, um, it will be cheaper to heat just one house, put the baskets up and then fill the tables with baskets, only have the heat on in this one house. And then when I outgrow this house, then I can move on. But my eventual plan, I believe, is to have the vegetables in this house with the hanging baskets. Last year I had the vegetables in the second greenhouse. It just wasn't big enough. It needs more space. I have a huge variety of vegetables and I think greenhouse number three is gonna be a better solution for that. A is the purple prints and that goes right in the middle. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that first. The worst pies in London. I have uh, Sweeney Todd stuck in my head because when Beta and I went out of town for a couple of days last week, we actually went to Broadway. It was part of her Christmas gift because I don't know about you guys, but 16 year olds are pretty hard to buy for um, for Christmas. So Veda loves musicals. So I decided that her and I were gonna have a trip and we went and we had a beautiful day in New York City and we saw a Broadway show, and then we saw uh, a concert. One of her favorite artists is Mitski. So we went to a Mitski concert, and we stayed overnight, and it was really a great trip. We took the train in, and uh, honestly, it was my favorite New York trip ever. It was just a really nice time. But now I have Sweeney Todd stuck in my head. So we're going to start with the tags. So you take the tags and then stick a tag in every pot so that it's um, facing you so that you can read it. So I want it to be in the front of the pot. And then uh, I'll show you how to plant them. It's nice and wet. So you just pull really close to the bottom so not not like up here but close to the bottom and it'll come out like that and then in the very center just push it down not it needs to be level with the soil so it's not too far deep okay okay so we've got rosemary and lavender in this corner burritos <laughs> jules is doing some succulents Putting them in also the three. My yes, you love them. Um, oh, that's there you go. That tray on the end. There's like a mixed tag that's, for that one. Yes. Yeah, cool. Right. Yep. Assorted. Assorted. Yep. One each. It's uh, pick as you go. Yeah. Okay. The lizard so one's so cool too. Lizard. I have some of that. That is nice. Okay, so I have the purple prints in the middle of every one of these pots. Next thing up is let's see the lamium is c and that goes just alternating sides so it'll have one on each side and then the sun patients will do opposite sides but again a little bit closer to the middle this year i was going way too close to the edge making changes learning every year that's how you got to do it just another appreciation shot of this beautiful variegation it's actually called orchid frost lamium My sister's gonna be so mad that I'm planting baskets right now. Like she'll be like, "Don't plant any baskets without me." <laughs> I'll wait till I'm there. But wait. Yes, and I was like, Jessica, I have to you don't get out of work until four four thirty. They're like, "Come over at five 30. I'm like, "I'm doing dinner." Yes. And then it's shout, like, I, I can't. Makes me sad. I can't. She was supposed to come up last night, but because of the weather. 
I think she's coming up tonight, but I'm not sure. Someone just emailed me thinking that I was somebody else. <laughs> Laura from Garden Answer. Oh. Yeah, I'm mistaken. All righty, I've got one more plant to put in these baskets to make them final, and that is the lavender sun patience. I said sun, and it came. <laughs> All right, if I'm being, if I'm being specific, this is called orchid blush, sun patient. Okay, I have the Touch of Lavender pots all potted up, and I now have to put uh, the hangers on them. I think these are 19 or 21 inch hangers, longer than last year. I ended up ordering uh, hangers that were too short last year. I didn't like them. So I got the longer hangers this year, and uh, I want to water these in just to touch with clear water, no fertilizer or anything yet, um, but my hose, I have to check to make sure my hose is plugged in. We undid all the water last night because it was so cold. I almost forgot, I wanna actually add um, a spoonful of slow release fertilizer to the top of every basket. A lot of my other fellow growers around here do this and uh, I wanna do that this year. So that's what I'm gonna do, a little sprinkle of Osmocote. It's a slow release, like four month fertilizer. Actually, six months. Baskets in the sky, flying oh so high. Take a look, it's in a plant, a green basket. So Jules took off for the day, but before she did, she got all these succulents potted up. And I think my favorite, of course, I love the burrito, but I really am loving the pink blush aloe. And I really like this little guy, but I don't know what it is because it came in an assorted bunch. So it's just an assorted, creeping sedum. So we've got some cool options and these guys will be hanging out here for a long time. And we just started filling the 10 inch baskets. That's a difference between a 10 and a 12. 10 inch baskets are a lower price point and they will be fewer plants and also um, like different varieties. The sun is shining. It's bright. I put my sunglasses down somewhere and I don't know where they are. I put my sunglasses down somewhere and I don't know where they are. Um, Ethan and I are going to go ahead and plant the strawberry hanging baskets. Now, according to the Jelly Farmer Handbook, you're supposed to plant four of these in a patio pot or a basket. So I'm going to go ahead and put four of these strawberry plants in the hanging baskets. We'll put the hangers on them and then we'll hang them up and they're going to be delicious. Last year I did two plugs in a six inch hanging basket and they just dried out too quickly. So this is going to give my customers a, more of a fighting chance when it comes to keeping them alive. And this is specifically called the Berry Basket Apple Blossom Strawberry. Four per pot. I'm just gonna start laying them out and then... How far apart they go? Well, we're gonna do them like... Strawberry 
perfectly even. 144 strawberries divides by four. I'm gonna finish putting the rest of the hangers on and then I have more baskets to plant. But that was the end of Ethan's first week. He worked three days this week and then he'll come back for a couple days next week. So, so far so good. I'm over on the other side of the greenhouse now and I'm putting together another combination and this is called After the Storm. And this includes a petunia, a calabrocoa, and a coleus. And it happens to be a couple of my favorite ones. And the crazy tunias I really like. This is the crazy tunia. I think it's purple. Yeah, cosmic purple. Has the really fun striations in the petunia. It's got this really pretty hula hot pink, which is a calabrocoa that has, like you can see, it's got the darker inside and then the lighter hot pink outside. The coleus is everybody's favorite little baby. These are the, the Great Falls Niagara, which are so good. They spread across the basket really well. I did a basket with these last year. Um, I think it was called Vintage Soiree. We're doing that one again this year too. Okay, if memory serves me correct, let me look at the back of the tag here. Yep, the coleus goes in the middle of the pot and then the other goes around it. I have to always be careful of this. Hit my head on it before. Okay. Now in the new greenhouse, when we're actually designing it so the thermostats are not going to be at head level. So my brother um, built a little bit of a board and it's on chains and we can actually move it around if we need to so nobody hits their head. You know what I think I'm going to do first? I think I'm going to actually put the fertilizer that I want, the slow release, in it. Because if I do it afterwards, sometimes it gets in the crevices and the nooks and crannies and of the other plants and I don't want it to burn. Even though this does say it's a no burn fertilizer, I just want to play it safe. We'll make in the baskets, we'll make in them tight. We'll make in them all on a Thursday night. My goal is to try to make it so easy. Okay guys, I'm gonna record a goodbye message right now because I know things are gonna get busy and I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to do this later tonight. I've got my mother-in-law coming over, my sister's on her way, I have no idea who else is gonna show up and we are gonna get as many baskets as we can filled. I'm gonna start filling more baskets and more patio pots. And I also have to start filling um, the five and a half inch pots, which I put like the purple fountain grass in, all the grasses, also the rubecchia and echinaceas. Those are going in larger pots this year. So I gotta go start to fill those. I got my pot filler running, mixing some more soil, and then I'm gonna get all of the soil in. So if, if I don't get to say goodbye, <laughs> thanks for sticking around guys, and we'll see you next time, which will be very soon, because we're in the busy season. But you're gonna have to see some sights and sounds of the rest of our evening. Probably without commentary, we'll see. My sister hates being on YouTube. She won't be on video. So I'll have to um, record her fingers putting in plants and pots. Okay. It's exciting though. Yes, I'm excited. This is my mother-in-law and she is planting the red geranium baskets. We're doing red geranium and vinca vines and she ended up getting about 70 baskets done and then my sister showed up to plant the combos. Ta-da! Oh jeez! <laughs> You're here! I'm ready! We just started planting, well not us, my sister just started planting the most popular baskets of all time, the red, white, and blue salute wave petunia baskets. We have. 100 of them. We have lots. Those are the white ones going in. And then here are, that's the tray of red. We have eight trays of each color to do. It's nasty outside. Nasty!